blogs at Jim Stark, or the publisher of Kitmaker Network, and lots of other sites. <laughs> and we're here to do another mail call. It's been two weeks, or roughly a week and a half, I think, or something like that, since our last mail call, and I've been waiting for some stuff to come in, and here's stuff. Uh, I was kind of waiting for some new products from uh, AK, but it looks like they're going to arrive later, maybe this week. Uh, but I want to go ahead and get pushed on with the stuff that has arrived, so we're going to go ahead and, and do that. Uh, again, I apologize. I know not a lot of content on the, the network lately other than these mail call videos. i uh, just been coding a lot and uh, working on some, some new content, which sadly is not forward-facing content. It's stuff for the back end. But yeah, uh, we're going to be notifying vendors of news stories and the like. Uh, looks like we've gotten the latest issue of Panzer Rex in. Uh, so I'd like to thank Lee Archer for sending this along. It's a uh, number 21 in the Panzer X series. This one is uh, um, not a specific uh, theme, I guess, because it's not in the themed books. Well, sometimes they do kind of theme them underneath, like, a, you know, X, number of X, you know, Ostfront and stuff like that. But this one is uh, yet another of the Panzer X series, which, if you're not familiar with it, are reference photos with captions of uh, wrecked or destroyed tanks. Uh, there are some color illustrations, obviously, in there as well. I don't know if they've been doing that the whole time, or that's fairly more recent. Uh, that's the artwork by Felipe, Felipe Rodna. Felipe, Fel, Felipe, Fel, Felipe, maybe it's just Felipe, Felipe Rodna. Um, all right, so next, let's push on. We've got something from MRC here. Hope everybody's been doing well. I have been... Getting ready for the holidays. Well, obviously we got ready with Halloween first, but uh, happy Guy Fox Day for everyone in Britain who, you know, it's a day late or whatever, but yeah. <laughs> uh, we have the uh, U.S. Air Force B-47-306 BWM. It's the, uh, yeah, the B-47. So this is in 1 one forty fourth scale. Not sure if this is a new tool uh, by Academy or uh, something they've had out before. I'm going to remove that plastic off here because I know it glares. Uh, but yeah, I have to pull all that off before I take photos anyways of the box. Yeah, and it's still glaring. I'll try to reduce glare, but yeah, there you go. Um, this one looks like it has uh, 235 millimeter length. So it's, it's pretty small. Actually, let's, let's just pop it open real quick so you can see. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's big for... One 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 forty fourth, but not not huge. Uh, obviously, being in a small box, it's not going to be huge. All righty, what what is next? We have a box here from Flyhawk, which has comes to us in a very very well secured mode. In case the ship is the. SS Titanic, I guess, and actually does not make it. All right. Oops, I'm trying to open it the wrong way, I guess. There we go. All right, what is in this one? More. There's more that needs to be cut open. This is like, you know, Jim struggles with boxes video. Number 65. Okay, so we've got a bunch of stuff here from Flyhawk. Yeah, let's go ahead and unwrap it all. I'm going to cover the smaller stuff last. Um, there's a lot of it. Whoa, lots of photo etch things. All right, so we've got a couple of ships. Um, the M HMS Penelope 1940. Um, this one has bonus stuff in it, so it's the deluxe edition. Um, these are our 1700 scale, I want to say. Yep, 1700 scale. So, for those fans of British naval World War II e era, this is 1940, as I said, because, yeah, right, 1940. Um, it's kind of bulging in the box, so I'm kind of curious to see what is holding, what is making the box bulge out like that. Um, and I didn't quite cut that all the way. I do have these sealed. And it still doesn't want to give up. Oh, I guess it's just the pl oh the plastic shifted over. So yeah, it normally would not bulge, but the plastic it shifted over in the box. So, but yeah, the the, the presentation of the the uh, the Flyhawk kits is very very uh, uh, usually usually a little neater than that. But but there's so much stuff in here, like little little boxes of or plastic boxes of 
parts that are look like they're slide molded and all sorts of cool things. And then as well as you can get little graphics like this one showing the box cover, but not with all the with all the stuff on it to put up on your modeling wall. And they even did the, the instructions in color, which is a benefit. All right. So uh, what else did they send? They sent the uh, I'm not throwing anything away there. Um, the there, I guess, I guess this is co-branded or, or similar brand. So the K Kajika, I'm just going to say Kajika, is uh, the High. This is the um, Imperial Navy Battlecruiser High, or High Hai A. It's probably uh, being Japanese is usually two, at least two syllables. I'm going to say Hai A. But, uh, but yeah, I have no idea if that's the correct pronunciation. This is also 1700th kit. This is the second release of the Kajika brand. So clearly they are connected, being that I got them in the same package. Um, not sure if it's just marketing connections or, or they're actually the, you know, just a different brand by Flyhawk. But uh, interesting, interesting. All right, so that's another one. All right, what do we get in terms of accessories? We got this very, very sturdy uh, display base. And this is also a Kajika, so this is a 1700 display base. And it's looking like it has some of the, the uh, like the, this is for a specific one? Yeah, this is for the high, high, high A. Um, so it has like information or it has the silhouette of the uh, the ship as well as the name. And then I think something in Japanese here in the middle, probably the high A uh, name. And then it goes on to this this uh, base. I'll have to take a look at that maybe in a separate um, unboxing or something just to see how that works and goes together. And then some other Kajika stuff as well. So this is the Detail up part series 1700th uh, for the IGN Battlecruiser. Hey, so this is the nameplate. So this, I guess it kind of, this is maybe just for just the nameplate. Interesting. And then this one is a uh, masking seals. Uh, again, same, same kit. Um, so, that, so they've got a lot of detail you can see there in those masking seals. And then they have a photo etch set piece uh, for it as well. And a lot of very small photo etch parts on there. If I can and then a full wood deck. So we would obviously want to get this out to somebody who wants to build it with all these cool add-on accessories and stuff. The deck looks very, very nice. Uh, it's in balsa wood, but it's it's very well etched and looks very clean. Uh, and then the last couple of pieces we have here are, actually last three, are um, metal barrels. And there's another one hiding in here. Um, and we have a Raging Robin... Wait, I jammed the con oh, This is for the Congo, 1914 Congo. And... I don't know. You guys, maybe, maybe you'll, you'll know what that is just visually. I have no idea. Some kind of signage thing, thing for it. And then this is the uh, Congo metal barrels. I think it was the Congo their first release. I, I'm, I'm going to guess so, unless they have a, a third release coming out, and that's the Congo. Um, I don't remember the, the second first release being the Congo, but maybe again, I'm not not remembering. And then the, this is just generic uh, chain anger. Which let's see if I can get it. Yeah, it's kind of too small probably to see on the to see on the uh, video camera, but yeah, it's very small black chain. It actually has some black paint on it because I can see some little black um, paint uh, granules or whatever in the in the package in there with it. Oh, and then we got this, which is the um, Bismarck one two thousand scale, a <laughs> uh, Bismarck one two thousand. Sorry, we have to look at this. This this this, this sounds cool. All right, so there is one two thousandth Bismarck. Uh, it looks like it all has etched on upper uh, hull detail, and then like a little plastic piece there wrapped in a little thing, and, and a base for it with the guns, and the guns already have the barrels on them, which is nice. So very, very, like, probably high, high detailed, but one two thousand. so if you really want to build a small battleship, that is going to be one of the ones, I would think. And one two thousand. That, that's a scale we don't see too often. One twelve hundredth, uh, obviously one... Uh, one seven hundred is the most popular ship scale size, I would think. But yeah, but one two thousandth is kind of more. Actually, I think that usually is reserved for a um, sci-fi ships. A lot of sci-fi ships are one two thousandth. I think there's a one twenty five hundred. I know a lot of Star Trek ships are one twenty five hundred. But anyways, all right. So moving on, what do we got in the in the Mig Jimenez box, which I did actually already open because I thought for a second before I flipped the box over, I was like, oh, this is the AK stuff. So I opened it to see if, you know what they'd sent, and it was like, oh, books from Mig. <laughs> They use the same, they use some of the same boxes. Um, must be a Spanish thing. All right, so this is the new In Combat Mecha Battlegrounds 2 uh, book, which is a very nice soft, color, soft cover 
uh, color printed book with many, many projects of, of various mechas and things. And we'll do a uh, train the page on that, obviously. And then we have number four in the Encyclopedia of Armor series. This is uh, Mig Fenez again. I'm not sure the, uh, if this is him directly or the, he's, if he authors these or somebody else does them. Uh, but yeah, I think this is actually Meg's. So this is, um, again, weathering. This is the weathering issue. And again, these have a lot of you know great projects in them showing a lot of different weathering techniques and so forth. So what else do we have? I have the weathering aircraft. So this is an issue number uh, seven. Interiors. Wow, that is some... If that's a scale model, that is some amazing work. It looks like a real interior. That probably is a real interior, right? That can't possibly be a model. If that's a model, it must be like mega scale. Okay, yeah, they're showing actual interior photos here. So that's probably what that was as a photo taken. Although I'm going to skim through it because if I can find a model with that kind of interior, I'm going to be like, whoa, you did some stellar work there. But yeah, I think there's a certain, there is a limit to what you can do. There are some great interiors in here, obviously. Sorry, you can't really see it at the angle. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, that, that is a real interior. Okay. Uh, I was not fooled. Well, I was briefly, but... <laughs> All right, so then they have the weather, regular issue of the Weather Magazine, and this one is issue um, 20, 21. 21. Uh, so uh, in English, of course, and this is faded, which I'm guessing is going to deal with faded subjects. And you can see, again, lots of great projects of different types, not, all, not just armor. There's some automotive, some train... Stuff some aircraft in there, so quite a bit of variety on the MIG books. And I really will be putting out some book videos soon, because that I really must catch up with. Can't let those get away. And I, I think I will do some of these um, Kajika stuff too, just so people can get a, a closer up look at some of these uh, uh, kind of new-ish uh, or new uh, offerings. Um, I'll maybe ask our, or my rep with Flyhawk too about the status of Kajika, whether they are a separate company, like marketing wise and everything, or, and I'm just getting them because they're sometimes new companies come out and they're like, Hey, Hey, uh, you know, X company, uh, you, you know, all this stuff. Could you help us with marketing and getting this stuff out? So sometimes it's just another say Chinese company that's, you know, says, you know, Hey, we, we've dealt with you to like, you know, work with you on various things or like maybe they use the same production facility, but that's the whole thing now with scale modeling. There's the CAD work the marketing, the research, obviously all those things. And then there's the manufacturing side of it. So in China, there are many manufacturers who are maybe high, you know, high quality uh, kit manufacturers, plastic uh, uh, manufacturers, and they basically will produce anything, you know, given to them with the right specs and so forth, the right, the right uh, CAD design, layout formats, file types, all that things. So, so sometimes these, these are different people, in other words, working on various projects, but the manufacturing might have been done at the same plant or something like that. And you guys probably already know most of this, but for the people out there who don't know it, I thought I would give, share a little bit of that insight into how the industry works. So, um, yeah, so that's it for everything. I'll be trying to get this up on these various spreadsheets for samples. If you're not familiar with how this process works, we get samples in to do reviews and builds on. Uh, some things we ask for like just an inbox review, some things we ask for a build review, sometimes we leave it open to somebody to, to give us a, you know, hey, I'll do X with that kit, I'll blog it, I'll, I'll put it on your forums, and you know, maybe at the end of the forums we'll, we'll do a feature on it or something, like a photo feature, or whatever the situation is. But yeah, we'll, uh, we will accept on the open ones that say open, uh, well, you know, just present us with what you think you want to do with it, and we'll tell you whether we're amenable to sending it. <laughs> uh, and a lot of times that does depend on prior work and uh, whether you've got a history of blogging stuff on, you know, either our sites or other sites or something. So definitely send us some links if you're interested in blogging a subject uh, or a, a particular kit and uh, show us that you can finish uh, <laughs> a model and so forth. Because to be honest, that is one of the more challenging things of this of this line of work is. Uh, finding people who will follow through and finish something, uh, myself included sometimes, I know. Uh, it, it's just one of those things where people, you know, we, we, we are maybe a bit obsessive to some degree about certain things, and we, oh, that's, that's a shiny thing. I'll, I'll, you know, look at this thing for a while, and I'll, I'll work on this, or I'll plan to work on that, and, and then, you know, of course, something new shiny thing comes along. Oh, look at this shiny thing. Or da, 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 da. So, yeah. Squirrel. <laughs> um... Anyway, so uh, that all said, we'll, uh, I think we'll wrap this one up. And uh, if you have any comments, questions, suggestions, please leave them below in the comment section, as always. And give this video a thumbs up or a like if you, if you liked it. And if you didn't like it, then, you know, 
sawed off and, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, you know, I, I, unfortunately with these videos, I can't really plan like what I'm going to get, especially when I haven't even looked in the boxes yet. So I know some guys show up, oh, you didn't really get much armor wise or whatever. It's like, yeah, but I, hey, but I got Panzer Rex. That's got to count for something, right? Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, well, sometimes we get the big boxes from Dragon with stuff and, you know, it's, it's all armor. And so and then the aircraft guys are probably like, oh, there's no aircraft or there's no, there's no ships. So I'm sure they're disappointed too, but yeah. can't make everybody happy is the moral of the story. As my dog growling outside the doorway. All right. Well, we'll see you next time on Mail Call. Uh, have a good, good one and we'll see you soon.